Thank you. 
turning towards the sun. We now turn to you, O oh God, for you are the source of life eternal. We sort out our priorities and aspirations often. Nothing that this world offers, even our human relationships and attachments, are not as significant as our covenant relationship with God our Maker. You made us in your image and placed the Holy Spirit in us. The purity and holiness that covenant needs to come, needs to come from above for all other relationships. Offer us courage to be renewed and inspired in your loving kindness. And let go of our guilt and shame, doubts and confusion, fears and insecurities, dependencies, or anything or anyone that has the power to know that no one has the power to save us from our mysteries, our feelings of inadequacy, and even hopelessness. And now our arms to lift the lives of those who are seeking heavenly intervention in their lives. We realize that many children woke up this morning hungry and tired, whose parents do not have a way to feed them. Refugees who fear for their lives and live without any certainty and assurances are seeking you this morning. We pray for our nation, seeking to find our identity as a people with integrity, value, democratic values of justice and peace. And we pray this for not just few of us, but all the people. Bless the efforts of our city council to reach our city's homeless, providing shelter and housing for all. We pray for those who are burdened by many concerns, seeking your loving presence in their lives and the lives of their loved ones. We pray for all who are dealing with losses and grieving grief, grief, grief at this hour, seeking your love and direction in their lives. Bring physical, emotional, and spiritual healing and all who are participating in this time of prayer. We pray for our church, and this major transition that we have entered into, evaluating our priorities and sharpening our aspirations. We thank you for the music ministry in our midst and our desire to serve the downtown community here in Pittsburgh. Bless our efforts, our plans. We lift up spoken prayers as well as our silent cries. As we pray together as Jesus our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom.
This person began to build and was not able to finish. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. First, I want to thank you for indulging me in singing our opening hymn. Although it was in the most recent, that is 1958, Pilgrim Hymnal, it is clear why it did not make it into the new sun century hymnal. Verses 2 and 3 are a bit colonial, and it would really not work well in inclusive text. All that said, I love this hymn. From utmost east to utmost west, where air man's foot hath trod, by the mouth of the many messengers goes forth the voice of God. Give ear to me, you continents, ye isles give ear to me that the earth may be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Now that's great writing. <laughs> A weighty Quaker friend, well really, all Quakers are friends. Well, this Quaker friend suggested to me that when writings of this sort come up, we must learn to listen in tongues. That is, not get the talk out in the ver verbiage, but listen to the message. God is working God's purpose out. Even the tune name, Purpose. This morning, rather than a sermon, I want to give you a state of the church message. I figured this, the holiday weekend, we were probably not going to have a lot of visitors. And frankly, there are more people here than I really had anticipated. So thank you for, thank you for, for, for that. So here's where we are. As of Wednesday, August 31st, Doug Patterson's pastorate with us officially ended. His earned sabbatical time is complete. Since Doug announced his planned retirement in July of last year, council has been preparing to find our next pastor. In the United Church of Christ, we are not sent or given a minister, as happens in other denominations. It is up to the local church, that is us, to find the person who will fill our pulpit. As with all things UCC, there's a thoughtful and intentional process for doing this. Our process is spelled out in our bylaws. It's a two-step process. First, we seek an intentional interim minister. This person is called to help us transition leadership. We know we are not the same congregation we were when Doug was called. We know that Pittsburgh is not the same city it was 25 years ago. We can all agree on this. The interim will help us identify who we are now and how we might minister to today's Pittsburgh. Back to the bylaws. They charge church council with finding the interim. With the help of our conference minister, David Ackerman, I wrote the call for our interim. Smithfield United Church of Christ is seeking a full-time intentional interim who has administrative experience with a multiple staff inner city ministry setting to be in place for September 1, 2022. We are Pittsburgh's oldest congregation, 1782, situated on a Penn family land grant in the city's Golden Triangle. Although relatively small in numbers, Smithfield United Church of Christ maintains a vibrant downtown ministry, hosting the Operation Safety Net Cold Winter Shelter and a well-used food pantry. We are part of the downtown Pittsburgh Ministerium, working closely with our neighboring congregations. With the retirement of our long-term senior minister, we are poised for leadership, ideas, and ways to uphold our mission statement. Ours is an inclusive congregation, open and affirming. We are committed to the oneness in Christ across all boundaries of race, ethnicity, national origin, age, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, family structure, faith background, ability, and economic circumstance. Well, here it is, the 4th of September, and we don't have an interim in place. Council received 
three profiles from conference for our position. Two turned us down. Number one was holding out for a full-time gig and applied to us just in case. Yet, we were given insight into the search and call process at a national level. That being, there are more churches seeking pastors than there are preachers looking for a call. The second came to Pittsburgh and met with council. We found them to be talented and engaging. They asked us questions about our budget and stewardship. I was personally embarrassed to have to state that we have not had a stewardship campaign in recent memory. We were turned down by number two because we were more than they wanted to take on at, their, at this point in their career. By mutual agreement, number three was not a good fit. We had a Zoom interview that was beset with technical glitches. The candidate was forthright, almost blunt in the answers to our questions. Council was evenly split on our first impressions. We asked them to come to Pittsburgh and worship with us. Council met with them after service. Again, there was great conversation. Number three talked about the role of the, the, role of the interim. That is, the job of the interim is to move people from their comfort zones, to get folks thinking differently, to not accept, but we have always done it this way as a reasonable answer. A bad analogy was the downfall. Number three said it was the role of the interim to smack the hornet's nest with a stick. Barb Wepler, one of our council members, was quick in her response, and I paraphrase, paraphrase, a hornet's nest is a community. We do not want to destroy our community. We want to grow it. Making the phone call to number three to say that we didn't think it was a good fit was one of the most difficult things I have ever done as a grown-up. The conversation to be, turned out to be a positive learning experience for me. They were clear that they were not the one for us and encouraged me to believe that we, Smithfield United Church of Christ, are doing the right things and are willing to ask the right questions. Bylaws again. The congregational president is charged with selecting the search committee to find the, in UCC speak, the settled pastor. I have done that. The search committee has been meeting. Even ahead of having an interim in place, I thought it was wise to have this important committee have the time to get to know one another. If I do say so myself, I think I put together a pretty good group that well represents our congregation. I will name them again. Ben Sankwitz, Jeanette Thomas, Nathan Hart, Mary Stocker, John Colburn, and Erna Knapp. I listed Erna Knapp, Erna, Erna last, that I might speak directly to her. I knew she was going to be here today for sure. <laughs> so Erna, I'm guessing that when you said yes to this committee, you also knew that other plans were in the work, in the works. Thank you for your time that you have given the search committee, knowing that life might take you a different direction. Your thoughtful, prayerful, spiritful contributions to our meeting have been a true blessing. My hope is that even from Venice, you might be willing to, particip be willing to participate in the writing and reviewing of our church profile to make sure it reflects who we really are. I have updated the interim posting, removing the September 1st date and, a bit of, and the bit about the shelter. Because of the new year-round new year shelter known as Second Avenue Commons, Allegheny County notified us this spring that they would not be using the, our building this coming winter. All the mattresses and the shelter-related issues have been removed from our lower level. Jeff Givens, our treasurer, brought to my attention a Pittsburgh City Council hearing that was this past Wednesday, that was Wednesday of this week. One of the bills presented dealt with the needs of the homeless population in Pittsburgh, identifying to build more trans transitional and permanent housing for the currently unhoused. Knowing that this will take time, the city was also seeking short-term, right-now solutions. I attended the meeting, and I spoke in the public comment 
part of the agenda. I said, good morning. I'm John Colburn, president of the congregation at Smithfield United Church of Christ, 620 Smithfield Street, our home since 1787. For more than 30 years, Smithfield United Church of Christ has provided shelter to the homeless population in some form or another. Bethlehem Haven started in our building. This spring, we were informed that the Operation Safety Net Cold Winter Shelter would not be using our building this coming winter because of the construction of Second Avenue Commons. In 2020, with funding secured with the help of the county administrator, the mayor's office, and the Urban Redevelopment Authority, life safety improvements were made to our building. For this, we are grateful. With that in mind, we at Smithfield want you to know that we are open to assisting as we are able to be a temporary shelter facility as the, shelter, as the city explores its options on the development of more permanent solutions to homelessness in our city. From the reaction of council, they were unaware that the county would not be running the shelter out of Smithfield. Our councilwoman, Deborah Gross, told me the city had been counting our bed spaces in their calculations for the winter. Nothing for sure yet, but we may be again a place out of the cold. In 1924, the elders of the German Evangelical Protestant Church signed a contract with architect Henry Hornbostel to erect a new edifice on the corner of Smithfield Street and Strawberry Way, kind of like about right here. The cost was not to exceed $450,000. Adjusted for inflation today, that would be just over $7 million. In 2011, this congregation engaged the architectural firm Strata to evaluate the cast stone exterior of our building and propose interior changes to provide ADA compliant access to all parts of our building. Those costs, adjusted for inflation, are right around $10 million. We are not alone. Churches all over the country are in a similar situation. Judson Memorial Church in Manhattan is one example. A building designed by the world famous architectural firm of McKean, Mead and White found itself in a situation not unlike ours a dwindling membership, and a crumbling building. Knowing that they were but one financial hardship away from closing their doors, they looked out to their neighbors, the businesses, the banks, the people around, to find ways to work together to benefit their neighborhood. They rethought their space utilization. Who could they share their building with? What could be done during the other six days of the week? Out of their successful rethinking and doing, Sustainable Solutions for Sacred Sites was born. S4, for short, is a five-year Lilly Endowment-funded program to produce sustainable solutions to the persistent concerns of congregations about their building problems. Building problems are turned into possibilities, are turned into possibilities by teaching and learning with imagination and experience. Smithfield United Church of Christ and four other churches in Pittsburgh applied to and were selected to participate in the S4 training. Representing us are Diana Ames, John Axtell, Joel Pretz, and me. We have toured our building from boiler room to belfry, pondering additional and alternate uses for the many underutilized cubic feet of this building. Now in the last minutes, before communion, before lunching here and then going downstairs to lunch, I get to the scriptures for today. From Luke, for which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? We know our costs, and they are not all monetary. Much of what must be done is in the hands of a handful of faithful who have more than just a sense of place, but a sense of community. We cannot wait for a new pastor to build community. That is not the role of a pastor, interim or settled. It is the job of the members to build community. 
Think about who is in this room because of you. Who is in this room because of me. People come to church because they are asked to come to church. We have a history and a, and a future to share with our neighbors in and around Pittsburgh. And from Jeremiah, just as the potter remade the vessel, God can remake us to be who we need to be in this time and in this place. I'm not ready to turn off the lights. So rather than who will turn off the lights, let's leave the lights on for you, whoever you are. Amen. For the communion service, would you turn to page 16 in your hymnal? Traditionally, the communion service starts with prayer of confession and our spiritual cleansing before we receive the communion. Susie is going to read the first part of the communion liturgy, and I'll come towards the end. And I encourage you to prayerfully recognize what you want to let go of and create room for Christ to come into your life. God be with you. Awesome. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Eternal God, who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your own image, for forgiving us when we act as though we have no claim on us, and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten by you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We remember Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and in the beloved community of your church, we await, we await Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer you our praise for women and men of faith in every age who stand as witnesses to your love and justice. With all the prophets, martyrs, and saints, and all the company of heaven, we glorify you. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. O God, God most, most high, high. Blessed, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in, blood, in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, celebrate Christ's resurrection, and await Christ's coming again. Amen. Come, Christ Jesus. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and the cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we may be salt and light and leaven for the furtherance of your will in all the world. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. 
the way we are going to distribute the elements is at your seat if you're not able to come up here. You can also come and kneel if you want or come forward. And Susie and I will uh, hold the bread and the, and the grape juice for you. I want to mention that it's gluten-free bread for anyone who's concerned about it. Body of Christ broken for you. Lou, this is the body of Christ broken for you. It's the body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you, Andrew. You can come this way. Body of Christ broken for you. It's the body of Christ broken for you. It's the body of Christ broken for you. It's the body of Christ broken for you. Christ broken for us. Body of Christ broken for you. Serena, this is the body of Christ broken for you, dear. Mary, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Ruth, this is the body of Christ broken for you, dear. Okay, here's another one. Okay. Body of Christ broken for you, Richie. It's the body of Christ broken for you. Yeah, now this is the body of Christ broken for you, dear. Mark this the body of Christ broken for you, dear. Jeff, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Hi, Jason, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ broken for you. It's the body of Christ broken for you, Tom. Hi, this is the body of Christ broken for you, dear. Hi, sir. We should take communion over here. Oh, Jim.
who freed us from our sin. Take my 